Mr. Wizar. Thank you, uh, Mr. President. And uh, first off, I'd want to congratulate all the organizers for the African American Heritage Month. Uh, great celebration that we have here in the city of LA. And today we have another great uh, item on today's agenda, and that is to confirm a nomination made by our mayor of uh, Mr. Vince Bertoni as the new director of the Department of City Planning. Uh, this is a very important position for the city that will have impacts not, not only for now, but for our future. And first off, I'd like to say welcome back, Mr. Bertoni. You're, you were here before. Uh, you know the city well. You know the de department well. You know the issues. You know um, how to work with the council and the mayor and all the different uh, departments in the city. So uh, we had a great discussion yesterday in our planning committee. Uh, we are very pleased uh, to see your nomination as someone who is experienced in the area of planning and land use. We discussed um, the need to not only move our cases through, uh, but also uh, to focus on policy and uh, look for ways to build the foundation of our planning for the city for the future in terms of uh, updating our community plans, uh, looking at our general plan and continuing the momentum we have with the recent updates on our mobility plan, our housing plan, and our first ever health uh, element. Uh, so we're very pleased to have you. I think this is a great addition uh, for us to move forward. And um, we have concerns throughout the city, uh, communities uh, who have raised the issue of uh, overdevelopment. Uh, we have concerns about uh, certainty when people are proposing a project, whether, uh, you know, what are the different avenues a project can take and uh, not sure if the investment is worthwhile because we're not quite sure what the outcome will be. Or uh, And so you know all these issues before us. Uh, we're very pleased that we're going to have an experienced individual in this seat. Um, I want to commend uh, an issue raised by my colleague on the committee yesterday, uh, Councilmember Harris Dawson, who raised the issue of diversity. That is something that um, our council takes very seriously, not only in this department, but every department uh, as we move forward and uh, make sure that our departments in the city and its thinking, its life experiences are reflected uh, of in terms of what this city is made up of. So thank you so much, uh, uh, colleagues, I urge an I vote. I think this is uh, the right appointment for the right time for the city of Los Angeles as we continue to re-identify ourselves and look for a new vision for the city. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mr. Weezar. Mr. Harris Dawson. We having a sound issue? the privilege of hearing from you in uh, planning committee uh, yesterday. Uh, I wanted to ask you to talk to the broader audience about the issue of diversity, especially in the leadership of the planning department. Uh, it's very, very important to all of us on this council, but I also think uh, to everyday people in the city that when they look and see who's doing the planning, who's making decisions, that uh, they see someone who they feel can identify with their circumstance and the landscape that they live on. So uh, if you wouldn't mind, if you could talk some this morning about how you plan to pursue that at the leadership level of the planning department. Mr. Roop. Thank you, Mr. President. Vince, welcome and congratulations. We're very excited to have you here representing the city of Los Angeles. Not only because you're a resident of Council District 4, but your experience and ability to engage with diverse communities are especially important. Your success in Pasadena in revitalizing that city and your background in creating the historic preservation overlay zones in Los Angeles, some of those that are in my district, are a strong indication that you have the skills that we need. <clears throat> There's a strong call for reform from the residents of the city of Los Angeles. And much could be solved if we updated the rules the community plans, and most importantly, make sure that everyone abides by them. The people of Los Angeles see City Hall as a revolving door for developers that ask for and receive exemptions for their projects. However, this perception is not necessarily fair or the truth. Most of the variances and zone changes we approve are because many of the community plans are 20 years, if not older, and vastly out of date. When these plans don't match the neighborhoods and the residents they were originally designed for, it's unsurprising that we often um, plan on an ad hoc basis. 
As the new director of planning, it'll be your job, with our help, to make sure these update, updates become a reality. There are also many concerns that we're only building housing for the rich. We need more affordable housing, no doubt. Let's look to the ratios in our menu of incentives for the state's density bonus law to increase the level of affordable housing required to receive those bonuses. Um, let's look at some of the many tools that my colleagues from uh, Gil, Mitch, uh, Mike Bonin, Ho um, Jose Huizar, and, and Paul Kukorian have discussed. Uh, we also need to restore trust in the city's planning process. You and I discussed that in, our of in my office. And, you know, we talked about that we need to leave behind the way, old way of public engagement, where we get the same people in the room together to regurgitate the same concerns and then repeating this process over and over again without explaining or building, or building consensus. These are a few areas of reform that we need to work on, and I want to support you and the planning department so we can work to build a greater city that, in, that engenders the trust of its people and creates a fair environment for all. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Rue. Uh, with that said, Mr. Wizar, Mr. Harris Dawson, why don't we call for the vote? Let's open the roll, close the roll, tabulate the vote. 14 eyes. Vince, congrats. Thank you. Welcome aboard. Thank you. Welcome home. Thank you. And Mr. President, um, for the record, for item 8, the annual salary for the Director of Planning will be $225,000, Thank you. We're going to go to item 25, Mr. Uh, Sachs. Mr. Sachs, are you here? Mr. Walsh. John Walsh, blogging at HollywoodHighlands.org or Jay Walsh Confidential, tweeting at Hollywood Dems. The issue here is uh, number 25. This concerns uh, street lighting. As you know, uh, street lighting has improved incredibly since I moved here in 1966. And uh, street lighting used to go out about every week, and it would take you three or four days. Now that we have the new type of street lighting, we haven't had a light go on. I'm near Capitol Records. We haven't uh, had a light uh, go on the blink in uh, four or five years. Again, when you do a good job, I am the first to congratulate you. I'm not going to say they're all a bunch of questions, they're all a bunch of questions. No, no. When you do a good job, I am the first <clears throat> to congratulate you, and the street lighting has improved incredibly. HollywoodHighlands.org. Okay, let's uh, prepare members to vote on that item. Let's open the roll, close the roll, and tabulate the vote. 14 ayes. We'll now move to item 11. It's my understanding the committee report has been circulated. So, Madam Clerk, on item 11, if you please open the roll. Close the roll, tabulate the vote. 14 ayes. Move to item 26. Mr. John Walsh, item 26. John Walsh, blogging at HollywoodHighlands.org. Again, REAP, Rent Escrow Account Program. Uh, landlords better realize if you do not keep your apartments up to, uh, uh, your units up to a code, uh, you're going to get fined. And these are a list of fines. Uh, and uh, th this, again, another uh, excellent job by the city. When it comes to, uh, and you have to have proof of compliance, number 26, and this removes various properties from REAP because uh, 
the landlord has now complied and fixed whatever was wrong, uh, whatever the code violation was in the unit. HollywoodHighlands.org. Okay, let's open the roll. Close the roll. Tabulate the vote. 14 ayes. Now we'll move on to item 7. Mr. Walsh, item 7. John, John Walsh tweeting at Hollywood, uh, Hollywood, at Hollywood Dems. Again, this is uh, street lighting districts. Uh, this one ha happens to be uh, in, on National Boulevard in Ca Castle Heights. Again, uh, crime is really sliced and diced by lighting because criminals go where it's dark, okay? That's where they go. And uh, with these lights, uh, uh, the hearings and protests have been completed. And uh, for number seven, 100 percent, you're doing a good job. Okay, Mr. Sachs, are you here, Mr. Sachs? Okay, let's prepare to vote on this item. Let's open the roll, close the roll, tabulate the vote. 14 ayes. Mr. Walsh, we're on item two. Mr. Walsh. John Walsh, blogging at HollywoodHighlands.org, or J. Walsh Confidential. Uh, item uh, two is another uh, item where uh, you have done, you're doing a good job. This is uh, Office of Finance reports regarding approval of, this is another issue of uh, recording liens. And uh, if any of these uh, miscreant uh, landlords uh, if you don't, everybody knows, you know, you can, you can get away with hell in Glendale or Pasadena. Here, we have the landlords on a leash, HollywoodHighlands.org. Okay, Mr. Sachs, okay, let's prepare to vote on this item. Let's open the roll, close the roll, tabulate the vote. 14 ayes. Mr. Previn, item one, Mr. Previn, item one. And Mr. Walsh, item one, please come forward. Pass. Mr. Walsh passes. Mr. Previn, Mr. Sachs. Uh, good morning, Council President Wesson. It is Eric Previn uh, on item 14 today, which is the ACE program, the Administrative Citation Enforcement Program. We're approving here a um, a little look-see at how that program has been going. Now, unfortunately, sir, uh, this is a program that is intended to provide uh, tickets to ordinary residents. Uh, we have a contract with a firm that is not Xerox Solutions, and I believe we're going to be looking forward to a uh, tuning up that contract fairly soon. Now, is, is it's he important talking to about understand that going out and writing tickets to folks for various activities like being in a park or when you're not supposed to or having your dog off of the leash is stuff that we should not be focusing on and the city attorney has been warned by various uh, groups that to go after this population which can sometimes be described as a homeless population sometimes it's just ordinary residents but the deployment of this kind of a program sir of an administrative citation enforcement program uh, rolling out a new program like that with guys and their new little clickers makes the public feel like, what are we focusing on, sir? How is this the appropriate thing to be doing? It just, to me, it seems like we could find a way to do something different. So thank you. Okay, again, Mr. Sachs. Uh, let's prepare to vote. Let's Excuse open me. the roll. Excuse me, Mr. President. Yes. There is a request to continue items 1H and X to February 17th. Without objection. And 1G. Any other... Before item I, 1G to February 17th. Anything else? All right, then uh, without objection, that'll be the order. Let's open the roll, close the roll, tabulate the vote. 14 ayes. Okay, that brings us to item 9. Stephen Weaver. Stephen Weaver. Al, Alfredo Hernandez. 
Michael Gonzalez. Mr. City Attorney, did you want to make an announcement? Uh, yes, Mr. President. Just to remind uh, council that this is a fair hearing matter requiring council's attention to the speaker at the podium or to their monitors at their desks. Sir? And also, Mr. President, amending motion 9A has been circulated. Okay. Thank you to the council for its time. Um, we're here on behalf of Sunset Landmark Investment to voice our opposition to this project. Um, I'm sorry? Okay, I'm listening. Okay. So the, uh, our, we have a lot of uh, points of opposition, but the main reason we have is that this is another Hollywood hotel project in a place that is frankly being overdeveloped, overbuilt way too quickly with our, without regard to the environmental laws and a proper review process. Uh, to allow this hotel to shortchange environmental review and to ignore the cumulative impacts of a number of hotels being built in the area does a tremendous disservice to the community and the businesses there. Uh, just today, today at noon, there's going to be a report on KCRW about how, uh, how many hotels are coming up in this area. So it's very much on the conscience of the city. Um, we don't want to end up in a situation like Porter Ranch where, you know, years later, we haven't, we've skipped all our homework, we haven't followed sequel, we haven't done the necessary reviews, and we find ourselves with this process. So where we find ourselves today is this disregard for the environmental laws, the process, the LA Municipal Code not requiring this report, it's going to engender litigation and we will file litigation if necessary. Thank you. So next, if you'd please come forward, sir, and identify yourself. Hello, council members. I'm Alfredo Hernandez, founding board member of the Hollywood Network Coalition, a broad-based coalition of Hollywood residents, businesses, educational institutions, and nonprofit organizations. Views and support and against this project were vetted during a le lengthy Q&A session of the Urban Policy Committee, which I chair. The committee determined it would support the project. Our full board also voted to support the project with a rooftop similar to Soho House, with no live music and no dancing. This rooftop is vital to this project in a climate like Los Angeles. We believe this is a sound project that continues to the revitalization of Hollywood that provides 30% local hire and tourism jobs. We urge you to deny these appeals and support this project. Thank you. Thank you, sir. If I could have next, is that Mr. Gonzalez? Please, sir. And after you, I have a Gil Smith and a Garen uh, Bostonian, or <laughs> I'll let you pronounce it. Yes, sir. Good morning, honorable council members. Thank you, Michael Gonzalez, representing the applicant. Um, this is a fantastic hotel that enjoys broad support throughout the Hollywood community. Uh, we have unanimous support from the City Planning Commission. Uh, we have a fantastic design by renowned Hollywood architects Roshan Van Cleve. Um, the project is phenomenal. 218 direct jobs, 386 direct operational jobs, excuse me, 218 direct construction jobs, and numerous indirect and, and induced jobs that will be created in the Hollywood community at a time when we need continued growth. Uh, the procedures that we are using are appropriate and proper. The mitigated negative declaration uh, analyzes every potential impacts and mitigates every impact to less than significant, and therefore it's an appropriate environmental clearance document, contrary to what our opponents are saying. Um, our opponents are also property owners in the area that uh, uh, may not agree with uh, how we're approaching Hollywood, uh, but they nevertheless do own land in a pretty substantial sized building very close to us. Uh, this council has the authority to approve the zone and height district change. Thank you. Thank you. The next speaker, please. Is it Bostanian? Good afternoon or good day, council members. I'm Gilbert Smith, and I'm chair of the Ricardo Montalban Theater and Foundation on Vine Street. Uh, this project that is being helmed by Grant King and his partners is a terrific project. I have a, a particular need because I am one of the business owners that's trying to bring entertainment back to Los Angeles and to Hollywood primary. The other businesses that are going to benefit by people being able to stay in Central Hollywood or CNN, uh, the Coenga Sunset Boulevard restaurants, entertainment businesses, LA uh, Film School, Kilroy Media Tower, um, the Icon, and Pantages Theater, and yes, the Montalban Theater. We have actors, we have people who have to stay in the central part of Hollywood, so it's a walking community again. Thank you very much. Thank you. Next. Yes, sir. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, my name is Garen Bostanian. I'm here with the Hollywood Chamber of Commerce, and I'm here to express the Chamber's support 
of the proposed hotel project at 1541 Wilcox in Hollywood. The Chamber believes this project will help to revitalize this area of Wilcox and bring much needed hotel rooms to the, one of the most visited parts of Los Angeles. We're particularly pleased with the project's pedestrian friendly design elements. Uh, this project is also well served by transit, which increases its accessibility to residents and tourists alike. Additionally, we believe the restaurant space will be a welcome addition to the neighborhood and utilized by both visitors and community residents. As you know, Hollywood is undergoing an amazing renaissance. As Hollywood continues to grow at an unprecedented rate, the need for hotel rooms will also increase. For the past several years, the Chamber has worked to attract new hotels to Hollywood, such as Mama Shelter and Dream Hotel, which, when coupled with this hotel, will completely transform this neighborhood. Our board is very excited about the 1541 Wilcox project and the much needed services. That Thank, you. Provide. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Ruth Sarnoff and uh, Arnold Sachs. Ms. Sarnoff, please come forward. I want to remind the committee, uh, I mean, the council today, uh, as well as the public, that all of the uh, business of the city council. Most of it takes place in committees and commissions, not in open discussion here in the council chamber. The, this body votes together 99.6% or something like that uh, of the time lockstep. It means that decisions are made before you get here, not here. And uh, we also don't uh, have uh, people that are able to track you through the multitude of committees, etc. I think that uh, we're turning the Hollywood area into another downtown LA, and we've got other places in surrounding cities in Orange County and in the whole southern uh, part of the state um, uh, that are, wet, are, are encouraging Thank tourism Thank at a you. rate that's going to backfire. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, Ms. Sarno. Okay, uh, let's prepare to vote. Let us open the roll, close the roll, tabulate the vote. 13 ayes. And that item is adopted as amended. Okay, that brings us where, Madam Clerk? Mr. President, that brings counsel to general public comment. Okay, is Michael Carrion? Arnold Sachs? Mr. Walsh? Oscar Mohammed? Ruth Cernoff, please come forward. Go ahead, Oscar, uh, uh, Mr. Yes, Mohammed. My name is Oscar Mohammed. I speak for the poor, I speak for the oppressed, I speak for the poor, and I speak for culture change. The late Imam Barry D. Mohammed, the leader of the largest community of African American Muslim in, in North America, in the Islamic faith. He introduced black history, told, us to, told his followers to recognize uh, Black History Month and the founder of Black History Month, historian Dr. Car uh, Carter G. Wilson. And we had 24 books in a box, and, he, and we circulated over hundreds of thousands of uh, Carter G. Wilson Black History Month books back in the 80s. Early life of Carter G. Wilson. Carter G. Wilson was born in December 19, 1875, in New Canaan, Virginia, to Liz Real Buck Wilson and Jane Wilson. The fourth, the, the fourth of seven children, young Wilson worked as a sharecropper in, in a minor to help his family. He began high school in the late teens and proved to be an excellent student, completing a four-year course in study less than two years. After attending Brick College in, Tennis, in Kentucky, Wilson worked for the United Thank States you. government in education. Thank you, sir. So, Thank you. Your time's up, Mr. Miami. Mr. Walsh, Mr. Walsh, please come forward. M uh, thank you, Mr. Mohammed. Mr. Walsh. John Walsh, uh, there'll be an anti-skyscraper initiative on the November ballot, so we'll take care of what's happening here. Uh, or anybody but Englander for supervisor. Anybody but Englander for supervisor. But the most important thing is we have arson attacks on schools on the east side. We had an arson attack just the other day with a, a trash barrel set on fire at Roosevelt High, where I have taught uh, previously as a substitute teacher. It's out of control. 
We don't know who does it. And you don't give a syphilitic rat's ass because it's not west of La Brea and the children being burned are minorities, not Jewish children. All you, I'm telling you, if this attack had happened in the West L.A., you'd be going crazy, especially you phony blacks and Hispanics who are controlled by the West Side Jews. HollywoodHighlands.org. Okay, uh, Mr. Ms. Sornoff, Mr. Previn, please, Ruth Sarnoff, please come forward. Mr. Previn, you'll be after her. Yes. Ruth Sarnoff, um, I hope you will all look at the downtown news, pages six and seven, to the article, Problems and Potential in the Industrial District, and also on page seven, the continuation of that article and another article called says move underway to create Skid Row Neighborhood Council. I think what we are seeing is uh, the tale of two cities being played out. And the thing about the downtown news, ever since they put that 90 projects going on up with 29 skyscrapers downtown and about 38 uh, more other big buildings under um, 20 stories, and now um, here we are uh, looking at pe more people being put into homelessness, 13,000 a month falling into homelessness in our county. Thank you. Okay, Mr. Previn, thank you. Thank you. If Sergeants, could you take the documents from Ms. Sarnoff, please? Thank you. Thank you, Council President Wesson. It is Eric Previn from CD2, and that was a very lovely celebration today. I, am, uh, uh, I follow closely and think you're doing a great job on uh, African American Month. This has been a very nice celebration. I'm a huge fan of Mr. Ritchie as well. Um, and I am not a big fan of the way the meeting is run sometimes, as we've heard. And one small issue that has come up is if a council member, for example, during a fair public hearing wants to speak to a group of lobbyists, even though he's been cautioned by the city attorney to stay seated or watch his monitor, it's no problem for me because they are always so busy, fluid, and everything, although it's against the law. But what they should not do is park their meeting right in front of the spectators and audience members here in the public because we are individuals with self-respect as well. And so when it's brought to the attention in a polite way to the council member, please just adjust it to the right or the left, and they don't do anything but ignore the public who made that request, it results in my request for Mr. Edo for protection because I am not going to be intimidated by a council member. Okay? So thank you for your interest. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, that concludes uh, general public comment. That brings us where, Madam Clerk? Council has motions for posted and referral. They are posted and referred. That clears the desk. Okay, uh, announcements. Mr. Buscaino. Thank you. Mr. President, tomorrow uh, the entire city of Los Angeles is welcome to attend the L.A. Crime Forum to be held tomorrow night, 6 p.m. at the Warner Grand Theater in downtown San Pedro. Chief Beck, Commission President Matt Johnson, and um, Operation South Bureau Assistant Commanding Officer Phil Tingridis will um, give, the, give us the opportunity to um, listen to police department strategies and address some of the ongoing crime concerns that we have across the city of Los Angeles. Again, tomorrow, Warner Grand. Uh, colleagues, you all got an invite. Everyone's welcome. 6 p.m. at the Warner Grand, the L.A. Crime Forum. Thank you. Any other announcements? Could everyone please rise for adjourning motions? Could all rise in the chambers for adjourning motions? I'm going to first look to Mr. Koretz. Thank you, Mr. President. We lost a great man and a tremendous civic and community leader last week when a wonderful gentleman named Alan Fine passed away. And for this memorialization of Alan, we're joined by his son Howard and daughter Hillary. Uh, just days before Alan's passing, I was privileged to join the Benedict Canyon Association in honoring Alan, who was too ill to attend, but we heard was much moved by the BCA's thank you salute in recognition of his public service. For more than 45 years, Alan Fine was a stalwart member of the community of his adopted home in Benedict Canyon, serving both the Benedict Canyon Association and more recently the Bel Air Beverly Crest Neighborhood Council. Shortly after moving to Benedict Canyon in the late 1960s with his wife, Barbara, and their then infant son, Howard, he joined the Benedict Canyon Association, 
also known as the BCA, and used his expertise as an accountant in volunteering his service as treasurer. For the next 45 years, through the birth of his daughter Hillary and through numerous comings and goings at the BCA, Alan was there, making sure membership dues were processed, funds were raised, and hundreds of meetings were attended. Alan was there through many battles that the association fought over development projects and city policies, and through it all, the association could count on him to make the funds available. He showed up at almost every fundraiser collecting the dues. In the early 2000s, after the tragic early passing of his wife, Barbara, Alan broadened his service to the community by accepting the appointment as the first treasurer of the newly formed Bel Air Beverly Crest Neighborhood Council. His long years of service at the BCA made him the obvious choice. For the next 13 years as treasurer, he attended numerous city meetings and had to make sure everything was done by the book. While some neighborhood councils in the city had funding issues, the Bel Air Beverly Crest Neighborhood Council remained fiscally sound under Alan's sure hand. Unfortunately, due to illness, Alan had to give up his duties as treasurer of both the BCA and the Bel Air Beverly Crest Neighborhood Council last year. But his tremendous leadership and his devotion to public service remain and will continue to remain sources of great inspiration to the people and neighborhoods he assisted. He was never one to trumpet his own horn, preferring instead just to get things done quietly and effectively. And that's what he did year after year, decade after decade. But in so doing, he provided an extraordinary and exemplary benchmark of how to achieve accountability with the utmost integrity and reliability for the sake of the community and its able representation. His memory will always be treasured by his family, friends, community, and city, and may he rest in peace. Thank you, Mr. Koretz. I'm still looking at my right side now. I'll look to the left. Uh, I don't see any members. This meeting is adjourned.